Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm chatting with Joel Freudman from True Precious Metals. Now, True is a really interesting story because as of last week, they were trading at a market cap of less than $4 million, and they just announced a $15 million deal with Eldorado Gold, who is a $3 billion plus company. Now, this deal should be of interest to junior mining investors because it's another example of how Newfoundland is turning into a major gold producing province in Canada. In this interview, we discuss the overall gold market, we get into the deal terms, and Joel lets us know where he plans on taking true precious metals over the near term. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Joel, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me here, Steve. So this year has been a pretty good year for gold. We flirted with the $2,500 mark a couple times. What's your take on gold? Are you, uh, we could say a gold bug? Uh, where do you think gold could be heading uh, in the near term? Historically, I've not been a gold bug until I got into the industry about four years ago. I will say all the macro factors that you'd look to see for gold are definitely here. That's why it's breaking record highs, like you say. You know, we've got increased monetary printing in the states and elsewhere around the world. Interest rates are starting to come down in Canada and other developed nations. There are high inflation rates, even though they're elevated relative to history. So you have all the drivers. There's geopolitical uncertainty in the world. So you have all the drivers you'd want to propel gold higher. And we're already really seeing it in the gold price. And I think we have yet to even have the real, you know, explosive breakout if, if things start getting shakier. So that's a very positive catalyst for gold and by extension, gold companies, including, you know, explorers like ourselves, True Precious Metals. You know, a bull case I just thought of for gold yesterday, we were sitting around uh, researching stories and I was looking at who's the biggest consumers for gold. And then you think about it, the by far, by far, the two largest consumers in terms of countries of gold are China and India, and, 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 and nobody even comes close to those two. And then we think about who are they in terms of global economic output? Well, they're by far the two fastest growing company countries in the world. So when we think about it, we got two countries here that are both going to be top, uh, two of the top three, possibly China could end up being bigger than the US uh, in, in terms of overall GDP, and they can't get enough gold. To, to me, when I think about that, and I don't know how much you pay attention to the macro, it, it really makes me think that long term, we're talking, you know, five to 15 years from now, uh, I think that the, the, the environment's really setting up strong. I, I totally agree. And you're already seeing it shorter term even. I agree with the long term look. You look at, for example, like the central bank in China has been hoarding gold. A lot of other countries have been hoarding gold for the central bank reserves. And so it's like you have both the kind of consumer demand for gold, like you were speaking to, and also institutional central bank demand for gold across the world, like Poland, Turkey, China being one of the biggest, though, buyers by far. So you have a whole set of different bases on which to base a higher gold price as the baseline. I think that's really positive in terms of overall demand for gold and the gold price, you know, and gold equities by extension. So... Let's talk about your company, True Precious Metals. You guys have the Golden Rose Project, and you guys just announced a $15 million deal with Eldorado Gold. Obviously, that's a pretty big partner, a $3 billion plus uh, US dollar company. How were you guys able to attract a partner like this to get involved with you guys at such an early stage? So we're really fortunate. You know, I mean, there's, I'd say there's two things with any junior gold exploration company or junior commodities exploration company you're looking for as an investor, as someone in industry, you're looking at the project number one and number two is the people. And so our project Golden Rose, which is Southwest of Newfoundland, I mean, we can speak to it a little bit more uh, probably later on, but effectively it's like, it's right between a gold mine and other major gold deposit, safe jurisdiction. It's like ideally located. We have gold, we have copper on the property. So the project has a lot of geological, geological merit to stand on its own legs. Like it's a very good project for the stage of advancement at which it's at. But in addition, it does come down to people. You know, we're constantly out meeting with players in the industry, meeting with bankers, making sure that, you know, industry and the capital market space is aware that true precious metals is out there and that we exist amongst the very crowded field of junior explore codes. And so we go to PDAC, the mining convention in Toronto every year. We were here again this year for, I think, our third year in a row. And as we do every year at PDAC, we have a whole bunch of, you know, companies come through the booth, larger companies, 
to take a look and do due diligence on our project because as our project advances, it gets more and more appealing to larger industry players. Um, so at PDAC this year is when we first met uh, the Eldorado team and things have kind of progressed since then over several months, you know, very extensive technical due diligence, as you might imagine, as well as negotiating the paperwork. Um, and, you know, ultimately we're very, very pleased to have secured this deal in the end really came down to the project and the people. And, and uh, we were also introduced to them by someone from our strategic investor, Ormond. So like really good combination of project and people here. Okay, so under the deal terms, I can see Eldorado has the ability to earn up to 80% of the Golden Rose project. And maybe we can later get into sort of what the long-term objective of the company is. Uh, but we're seeing certain names really pop up in Newfoundland where there's a lot of interest in Newfoundland. And the first name that I think of when I think of people who have gone gone all in uh, on Newfoundland is Eric Sprott, see your deal. And then I see he's an investor there. It does not surprise me. I think he said he, he thinks that uh, Newfound Gold is the biggest opportunity of his life, which to, to me is fascinating because... I talked to a lot of geos and 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 I'm sure you do too. I know you're not a geo, you're more of a securities lawyer by background. And uh, if you've had an experience anything like I have, which I imagine you have, they often love to crap on projects that aren't their projects. <laughs> uh, and case case in point, I was told Newfound Gold was a pump and dump uh, by drill. lots of geos early on. And then look at these drill holes that they've announced. Absolutely Monster spectacular. Number. Yeah. So I, I got to ask you, when you're talking to El Dorado and you're talking to them about Newfoundland, what is it that, that they're interested uh, about when it comes to Newfoundland? Um, how, how, how much more interest do you think that there could be in Newfoundland mining projects? So I think we're really only starting to see the beginning of the wave of consolidation. I've talked about this as far back as a year, year and a half ago. As you mentioned, like my background is securities and mergers and acquisitions lawyer deals, deals, transactions, not a geologist, not a broker. Um, and so I kind of see the underpinnings of a move of larger players in Newfoundland because you had all these juniors, Newfound Gold, of course, being, you know, the biggest and most visible and successful one. But there was another company there who's our neighbor. They were called Marathon Gold. And they just got bought out in January of this year by Caliber Mining, which is a billion dollar gold producer uh, for it was $340 million Canadian dollar deal. And Caliber just bought out Marathon, our, like our immediate neighbor on the same structural corridor. So they're on the same street. They're our next door neighbor, the biggest house in the neighborhood. And they have a Marathon, now Caliber, has 5 million ounces of gold. That's a massive deposit. And it's in a safe jurisdiction. It's Newfoundland. You're not talking about a, developed, a developing uh, nation here with all kinds of risk. And it's being built into a mine right now, goes into production early next year. Interestingly, Caliber is backed by B2 Gold, which is like multi-billion dollar gold producer, global gold producer. B2 Gold also has a large stake in our other neighbor, used to be called Matador Mining, now they're called Omega. Uh, you know, this would actually be great for a map basically to show, but we, so we have B2 Gold investing in Caliber on the one side of us, B2 Gold investing in Omega on the other side of us. We are flanked by B2 Gold investees. And this is really Eldorado's inroads into the province right in the middle of it all. And, and again, all three of those companies are on the same structural corridor, the Cape Ray, Valentine, Lake Shear Zone. We're on the best street in the province. And unlike, no disrespect to a newfound gold or the Appleton Fault, there's a lot of excitement on that area. There are no deposits over there. Whereas Caliber and the, the, their project that they bought from Marathon, that has 5 million ounces worth of like quantifiable deposits. Same for Omega on the other side of us, 600,000 ounces of gold. Those are like technically compliant deposits. And so True, who has yet to establish any um, defined deposits, but who already has two or three pockets on its property, the Golden Rose Project, that have gold in drilling and copper in drilling, it's starting to look like there's that potential. And this to us is really validation of like, if you're waiting to see bigger players come in, you're waiting for consolidation, you're waiting for development of a project like this, this is your green light. Like it's happening right now in front of your eyes. Okay, so you guys have a market cap of like, four to five million dollars. Again, the deal value is uh, in the $15 million range. Um, can you walk us through how the $15 million is, is, is distributed? Certainly. This is an option agreement. So it's not like a sale of the project immediately. It's a staggered earn in for Eldorado. The project, it's typically how you'd see, you know, a lot of deals done, especially in junior mining where they spend more and more. Basically, as long as geological results hold up, 
they spend more and more and invest more and more in the project to advance it until eventually they earn their ownership stake. And so the way that 15 million is divided, there's about $8 million in cash to true over a five year period. Uh, specifically, we get $250,000 a year cash into the treasury. So that's great. It kind of helps run the public company. You know, it's a nice to have. Um, but the, I think probably the bigger value add is there's also $7 million of expiration to be done over five years. And it increase, starts just below a million. It goes to a million a year and starts ticking up. Um, that's going to be very valuable because we already have some good technical expertise from our strategic investor from Ormond Mining. And now we're going to be able to draw on the Eldorado team. And actually, unusually, they're letting us continue to operate the project. So even though they're investing during an ownership stake, they're not using their own people to come to Newfoundland and do it. They're, they're leveraging our existing team and expertise, but they're going to give us all the expertise they have of finding and building mines. And we can draw on that as well as have it funded by them to explore the project. So I think that's like a real win-win for both parties, as well as for the company and the investment potential of the company. You have like a company that's going to be funded by a larger player, is going to have much lower out-of-pocket burn because the exploration's funded by uh, Eldorado. It's a really great setup. Will you guys maintain any sort of royalty within the agreement? Yeah, the, the way it works is an option to earn an 80% interest. I forgot to mention that. So if at the end of this, they spend, you know, they give us the $8 million in cash in total over five years, they've done the 7 million of exploration. At that point, they earn 80% of the project and the structure flips from an option to a joint venture. So basically at that point, Eldorado owns 80% of the project, True owns 20%. Uh, they take over the managing of the project. And if True doesn't, you know, obviously now we're talking several years out, but if True doesn't fund its share of the project costs at that point, by which point there's probably deposits on the project, you know, you're probably talking about production decisions, that kind of thing. They're far off, but that's what would happen at that point. Um, then True's ownership interest starts getting diluted down from 20%. And if it goes below 10%, it turns into a 2% royalty. So, you know, there's still like a long trail, assuming things are going well on the project. And you know, Eldorado wouldn't have come in for like a quick, they're looking at this very long term. If things are still going well, there's like a long tail in which True is going to be getting cash from things like royalties or from its uh, JV interest. So if I'm an investor in True Precious Metals and I'm trying to sort of understand what the long-term plan of the company is. Obviously, you don't know how this agreement is going to work out, whether it's going to be fully realized or not, and whether that's going to be a 20% um, uh, equity stake in the project or a 2% royalty. But um, are you guys going to be looking for other projects? Where like, 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 where do you see this company in five years? If, if, if everything works out and, um, and, uh, and, and you guys end up with, let's say, 20% or 2%. I, I assume you guys are going to be looking to uh, other projects. So, I mean, I can say without going into too many details of what's been going on behind the scenes, before this deal started to materialize, we had been looking at a lot of different uh, asset acquisition opportunities and mineral exploration because we had $3 million uh, from, our, from the strategic investment late last year. And so we were looking at a lot of deals on the buy side you know, things like deposits, small producing mines. Right now, our focus must be, you know, complete this transaction and operate the project with the Eldorado support and direction, really. But sure, as we get further along and things are going well, then our role will become increasingly passive with collecting some sort of, like you say, like an interest or royalty income. And at that point, you know, it's like usually by that stage, a junior like a true will get bought out by the partner or will sell its interest and find another project to sink its teeth into. Those are, you know, considering how much happens here in this industry and in this company in six months, it's very hard to say what will happen in five years, but I think this will ideally position us for optionality going forward. Um, I think that's kind of the best way. And you, at that point you say the company's got exposure to a great project. It will have much more cash in the treasury and a management team to look for opportunities. It's a very good combination. And well, Joel, congratulations on the deal. I think it's uh, exciting. And uh, I think you guys are in a really good jurisdiction that uh, is uh, really exciting for junior mining investors. And uh, hopefully you'll come back on here as this project uh, continues to develop to update shareholders on uh, what's happening with the company. Appreciate you having me here, Steve. Thanks everybody for watching. This is a massive inflection point for this company. Like this is the time to really start digging in and paying attention, doing a deep dive on the company as it were. And so I hope everyone takes a you know very close look at True. And again, Steve, thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for your time.
Thanks, y'all. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.